coming up on the FTC Open Line Show. 13598 Mobots and 15357 Morbots are here together as they build an incredible robot uh, as they're working together, building two identical robots, getting ready for competition in just a couple weeks. This robot is absolutely outstanding. You wouldn't even know this team is a middle school team as they're coming in from Michigan. This team is looking to compete at a super high level. Check out their intake designs, what they're using for their wheels. Their transfer system's great. I really like uh, both their uh, specimen and their sample scoring as well, too. Multi-stage slides that they're using. Sincerely, this team really looks to be elite. Uh, so can't wait to talk more about that, how they're using the Otos odometry as well, too, and a little more behind their, how they're approaching events as well. So let's get ready to learn more about these incredible teams coming up here on the FTC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the U.S can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. And joining us on the FTC Open Alliance Show, 13598 MoBots and 15357 MoreBots. And we're going to be talking about these are two teams that are working together, creating uh, this awesome robot that we have in front here. You all are competing in just a couple short weeks coming up. So we got Cooper, Carter, and Walter on. And hey, why don't you all introduce yourselves? Let us know what you do on the team. And we got so much great stuff to talk about. Um, my name is Walter, and I um, have worked quite a bit on the on-shape side of putting together a robot, but right now uh, I'm trying to learn a little bit more in programming. Uh, I'm Cooper. I have done most of the stuff with our intake, and I've done some on-shape stuff as well. Hi, I am Carter, and I've been helping out with, with uh, putting wires together just general finding out where things go and and a little bit of CAD. Well, obviously we have a phenomenal machine in front of us so far and you talk about amazing progress you've been making. I can't wait to dive more into it. First thing we're gonna be talking about is uh, some of your intake designs and going more into your intake wheel. So break down more of it. How did you come up with your design and let's break down what it is a bit more. So we started with some like scrap parts that we had just to make sure that our idea was gonna be effective. And then we slowly went through our uh, change designs on Onshape and until we ended up with this, we have Oh, so we initially started with just um, some like wheels like this. And then we uh, came up with something like this, which they worked pretty well, but they weren't great. And then we eventually uh, settled on this, which works pretty well. And then alongside of that, we use sur surgical tubing. So let's, let's walk through from a design wise, uh, into that intake wheel. Like how did all this come together for things and what are you actually using on your robot, on your robot right now? Um, so Okay, so we're using this intake here, which we 3D printed using our bamboo 3D printers. And then uh, just, this is the wheel design that's on the robot right now. It's just another copy of it. That's really, really cool. And looking at, you know, from, from this so far, is this what you think you're gonna be moving forward with that competition? Are you happy with uh, what's on the robot so far? And what kind of testing have you done with it so far? Uh, we've used it at the field a lot. It works really well, and I think it's going to be good for competition. Yeah, we got a you know a video that we just put up on screen here that is kind of going through some of your cycles uh, that you've been doing for that. How much driver practice is your team getting uh, typically in a week? Uh, probably about a few hours a week, I would say. Let's talk about how the, that specimen continues traveling through your robot here uh, with your transfer system that you're using. I see multi-stage Viper slides that you're doing for it. Uh, so talk to me more about how that transfer system all came together. Yeah, so we are um, here. Let's put it in action here. Um, so after um, our intake intakes our specimen, 
After we intake our specimen, we have our intake on a um, arm made out of polycarbonate, so it's really flexible, that is on a servo that rotates back in and drops into our bucket. And that's uh, our main idea of transferring um, the sample through our robot. And then we're going to take it then from the bucket, and then we are going to extend the bucket up and then end up dropping the specimen out into um, the net. Um, of course, our, our bucket is going to go a lot higher than it currently is. We're just doing this for their, um, the video. So when you were looking at testing those systems, what other maybe options were you considering before you went with these slides? Um, before we were doing the slides, we, um, we, we thought about maybe using like a, a pivoting arm for the robot and we opted out against it because, um, uh, it was, it was kind of more clunky. We figured this would be a bit more compact. We didn't have to worry about having a giant arm going through the middle of our robot and, um, weight wise, this kind of saves a little bit of weight and we don't have to worry about keeping, um, a slide on our arm, I mean, extend into the little um, submersible a little bit better. When you were thinking about like strategies for the game and stuff like that, you know, I think about like cycle time. So how quickly can you score that sort of thing like that? Uh, you know, you're going, you're picking up a piece, going in the bucket and, and scoring so far. How quickly are you able to typically get like a, a cycle in, in a match? Well, we haven't, um, we haven't really looked at the numbers yet, but I would say that we could probably get in a cycle and maybe about um, under ten if we're if we're really rushing it. Um, I think yeah, probably around ten seconds, maybe a little bit less. If we um, if we would have went with our pivot arm, then we would have been a little bit more tippy since there's a little bit more weight on it. But I think right now we're in a, a pretty decent spot for scoring. Yeah, I mean, just watching, you know, some of your videos you've been putting out, um, really cool stuff with how that cycle's been going on there as well, too. Um, you know, we talked about, like, sample scoring here for that as well, too. Is your team looking at doing specimens as well, and then how are you scoring those? Yes, we we are going to use specimens, and we're going to score it using, using, using uh, this, using this of where it's just too – it's too uh, indents of where it'll go into the grooves of the specimen and it's attached to a two-stage viper slide and when we pick it up we have we have it so so we, we have it so it'll pick it up out of range so it can move out and then then we'll just bring it over to the bar and just pull it out pull it out using the using the viper slide strength yeah, and just watching, you know, once again, I love the videos that you're producing for things because it just really helps with, like, getting a great understanding of how the cycle time works for things, how it works. I love it. You know, a lot of people don't know in Michigan, right, that, like, from a team perspective that all Michigan teams are middle school teams for things. And some of the competitive play that's been coming out of Michigan has been so amazing. Matter of fact, we just had the world record set, right, for uh, this game coming out of Michigan as well, too. So I think your team's going to be extremely competitive uh, with us as well. And uh, – uh, one of the things I want to ask about, um, you know, you talked about uh, with the, the scoring on that. What made you want to go with like a passive grip uh, for your specimen scoring as well versus like um, some of the different options you were considering? Uh, we went for a pass. We went for a passive grip because if we used like a servo to to grip onto it, it would it would use more power. But with a passive mechanism, it wouldn't use too much. It wouldn't use any power at all, and it wouldn't. And, and we wouldn't have to have any more servos, so we could put servos on any other part of the robot where we needed it. Really, really cool. Uh, and one of the things uh, that your team is utilizing as well is different options for odometry as well, too. I'd love to hear what your team has gone with for that. And maybe what are some of your autonomous strategies look like overall? What are you actually trying to do in autonomous? So in autonomous right now, um, our main method of moving around is we're using the uh, – uh, Spark Fun's optical odometry sensor, um, which is long for Oto sensor, and essentially it's it works almost like a mouse would with a with a computer. It um, measures distance using a little camera, and we're able to really effectively move around and even recorrect if we're moved um, off centered, and we're, we can really quickly move around with it. And it's 
Um, we, we try and uh, tell it to move um, however amount on the x-axis and the y-axis. Then we can um, use a, a command that kind of looks like a robot.stray to move back and forth. And there's a robot.turn we also use for turn in. And then for strategy-wise, um, um, we haven't really talked too much about it, but we, um, we were thinking about maybe trying to grab um, samples and bring them to the human player right off the bat to get them ready for specimens, we can score specimens. And then it's also going to depend on where we're at, whether we are, um, whether our robot's going to be closer to the buckets or the human player on whether we want to go score into the buckets or bring um, our robot over to the human player so we can make samples. Um, has your team looked at doing anything with like April tags yet on the field? Uh, um, you know, we're talking about the odometry. I think that pairs really well with April tags. I'd lo love to hear if your team has considered that. So this year, um, uh, well, well, last year with our program, we had four separate programs for, for, for each position that a robot could start in. And then this year we were looking into using an April tag to determine where we were at on the field, but none of our cameras were really working out too well. So we kind of put April tags um, aside and we're just going to run with four different autonomouses. Yeah, that's really cool. And I guess yeah, from odometry standpoint before, has your team done odometry before, like more of the traditional, like, you know, utilizing like an omni wheel to get position, that sort of thing? Um, in the past, um, I think before we were part of the team, I think we did use an o uh, um, odometry wheel. But um, while we've been a part of the team, we haven't. We've mostly just gone over rotation of the wheels, which ends up running into um, mechanum slip, which another um, perk of the Oto sensors that um, completely eliminates that. Yeah, that was going to kind of be my follow up is like, how, how easy has been the Oto sensors for your team to implement for things? Like, have there been any challenges for it? Has it been something to be able to pick up and utilize right away? What has been your experience with it overall? Um, so far, it's been an amazing experience. It's, it's really simple code the code is real it's like super straightforward super easy to read and the the robot you can push it around as much as you want and while it's doing its programming it automatically recorrects for itself and it it's almost it's all almost always goes right to where you want it to and it will even recorrect for itself it's been an amazing experience uh, I want to talk about and wrap up a little bit about your team philosophy. How does your team operate overall? How do you approach, uh, you know, first and into the deep and that sort of thing? Uh, especially, you know, having the two teams building together. I'd love to hear more about that. So we we like to be the team that, like, everyone can rely on during competition. Like, the team everyone wants to be partnered with to be, like, reliable, like, to fill the gaps with any weaknesses of the other teams and stuff like that. And we have a mobile body program at our school which like allows like older students to help out the younger students to help them through school so looking at you know your first competition coming up in just a couple weeks for things uh are you doing any sort of like pre-scouting to see what the other teams are doing or anything or what preparations is your team taking to get ready for competition very soon um so our team um we, we like to um go on you use a uh, youtube and sometimes we will also watch um, some of the competitions that are already happening so we can see some of the other teams, see what designs they're using, strategy. And we also like to use the Orange Alliance to figure out stats, numbers, and how things are looking. Awesome. Well, MoBots and MoreBots, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about your team's progress for thing. This is an incredible robot, by the way. I can't wait to see this compete in just a couple of weeks as well, too. It's going to be awesome to see. Uh, you guys aren't that far away from me, so I really am looking forward to seeing uh, what you all have to bring in. And, of course, good luck as you battle your way, hopefully, to, to the uh, state championship as well, too. So can't wait to see how you do, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. StudiCut Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.